Ever notice how INFPs can vanish faster than your socks in the laundry? One minute you're having this deep philosophical conversation about the wonders of the universe, sharing dreams and fears over coffee, and the next, poof, they've slipped into another dimension without leaving any trail of breadcrumbs or lint because they're socks. Hey, I'm Sherman and welcome to Geek Psychology. After transforming myself from this guarded rogue running through life's dungeons solo to someone who now thrives on helping others to use the strengths of their personality type to be happy and fulfilled, I've gathered some rare insights along the way and I'd like to share those with you about us INFPs. Today we're going to unravel the mystery behind us INFPs and our disappearing acts so that our friends like you and partners can have a bit of solace and closure for what's going on. So grab your explorer's hat. It's time to understand what really is going on when an INFP pulls a Houdini. I wanted to leave that on the whole time. So have you ever reached out to an INFP, your friend or partner, only to find that they've disappeared from the face of the earth? You text, you call, you might even consider sending out a search party and only to discover that they're actually fine. F-I-N-E, they're fine, they're just unreachable. It's like trying to hold on to a cloud, intriguing but frustrating. The thing is, for INFPs though, this isn't usually an intentional ghosting. It's more about seeking refuge from an overwhelming sense of emotions or the external situation. As INFPs, we need a lot of time to process our identity, to understand what's going on. It's like this puzzle that's never going to be actually completed, but we need to like pick up this piece and this piece and put them together and just get a little bit more clarity over the image of who we are as people. And that takes internal, intentional processing time. INFPs have an incredibly rich inner world. When life gets too loud or stressful on the outside, we retreat into our sanctuaries within. Think of it as our own personal Hogwarts. For extroverts who thrive in external stimulation, this can be baffling. While you're busy seeking relief in friends and talking to people and maybe busying yourself with work, um, us INFPs, we need to dive deep into this introspection and fantasy and clarifying who we are as people. Our disappearing acts can feel flighty, perplexing, and sometimes downright frustrating to those around us. The magic key to understanding all of this is empathy. So recognize that we as INFPs need this retreat time, not because we don't cherish our relationships with you, but because it's essential to our mental and emotional health. We need to put ourselves into a position where we can rejuvenate. This is how we do it. And then we can come back as a better version of ourselves, a more resourceful version of ourselves. My wife is an ENFJ, and the fact that I could go for days without human interaction drives her a bit crazy. Another key is space. We're like cautious cats that need room and time to acclimate. Sometimes stepping back is the best way to invite us closer when we're ready. Soft nudges work best. Think more along the lines of like, I'm here when you want to talk rather than we need to talk now. That's one of the quickest ways to never see us again. Striking a balance between granting space and maintaining connectivity is actually one of the keys to creating a strong relationship with an INFP. I always imagine it as a rope that both people are attached to. And being aware of the slack and the tightness keeps the relationship intriguing. It keeps this push and pull dynamic going. So imagine the, the joy of rediscovering each other after a period of self-exploration, armed with fresh passion and insights and a new perspective. It's way better than constantly being pulled around and wanting to go in a different direction. It's also better than having just too much slack, despite there being this long rope of freedom, it's not being utilized. If you're in a relationship with us, that doesn't mean that you need to sideline your needs, but rather comprehending ours, which creates a deeper trust, is something that's going to be very helpful. 
and of course explaining your needs as well and if the INFP in your life does not accept that or does not create a compromise then that is a deeper issue that maybe you both need to talk about but constantly expecting us to be on and be active and be peopling even if it's with you is uh it's not a good situation. As an INFP, I have personally experienced how patience and understanding have transformed my relationships, and how the opposite was the start of a slippery water slide of doom. So my hope is that if you are not an INFP, then you've not only gained some insights, but also cultivated a greater appreciation for the profound and sometimes chaotic inner realms that make us INFPs a bit difficult to relate to sometimes. So remember that deciphering why we need to retreat is a cornerstone to strengthening the relationship and making a more empathetic and enduring relationship. Before we pull an INFP and vanish in search of solitude, let's not forget that our quest isn't quite complete. If you've enjoyed exploring the complexities of our personality type with me today, and would like more insights into why we do what we do, then go ahead and tickle that subscribe button. Share your personal experiences of being an INFP or your interactions with us in the comments below. Here's to forging deeper connections and ensuring that no INFP gets lost in the metaphorical laundry basket again. Good luck, have fun. Peace.